Hi there, my name is Dr. Natasha Rachel. I'm the Director of Instructional Technology for Atlanta Public Schools, and this presentation is going to take care of my requirements for Module 3 of the Personalized Learning Endorsement for Kennesaw State University. This module covers mastery learning and personalized learning strategies. In this presentation, I'm going to demonstrate my ability to explain a mastery philosophy of teaching, as well as providing a list of classroom strategies with strengths and weaknesses um, to implement and support personalized learning. Before we jump into those strategies, I think it's important that we talk about the difference between a traditional teaching environment and a mastery learning environment. I pulled two images here from the internet that I thought really spoke well to the difference between the two. So in that traditional teaching environment, it's what we all grew up with, right? It is the teacher at the front of the classroom, students sitting in straight desks, uh, straight rows of desks. Um, it's also a situation where the teacher teaches the content, we take a few um, assessments along the way, and then we gear up for a big test at the end, we take the test, and then we move on to some new content. So regardless if we mastered that piece of content or not, we're moving on. In a mastery learning environment, I pulled this image here from Otis, which talks about the five steps of mastery learning. And while it may not be five all the time and every kind of um, example that you see may look a little different, this one here speaks to pre-assessment instruction, formative assessment, correction or enrichment, and summative grading. The piece that I really appreciate here is at number four, and that's that, it, it's that correction or enhancement. So what this is allowing to happen is for the student to really gauge, understand, master the concept before they're moving on. There's a correction there. Um, and maybe if the student doesn't need a correction, maybe they've already got it, that enhancement is provided. So they're getting above and beyond. They're getting um, some more challenging um, interactions with the content. And so I really appreciate that. And I pulled this quote from Otis here. The purpose of mastery learning is to ensure that students truly master the subject material before moving on to the next course. In a traditional model, students who do not master the content in the set amount of time are rarely, if ever, given additional time and opportunity to relearn what they miss. And in content areas where the content builds on each other like math or um, maybe world history or US history or something like that. This is really unfortunate in that traditional model. Um, if you don't master two plus two, how will you master two times two? So I really appreciate that number four there, that correction or enrichment. I have come up with six classroom strategies that I think um, would definitely benefit students in a personalized learning environment um, in that mastery learning environment. So the first is a flipped classroom. And this is, um, we've been talking about this for years, that flipped classroom just allows the students to engage with the content while they're at home and bring their questions back to the teacher the next day or it, whatever that situation may look like. Um, this will require the teacher to spend some more time at home creating the tools, mastering the tools and resources that they want to use to, for example, record their lessons. But the benefit for a student to be at home and engage with that content and then come fresh the next day with questions and really have the opportunity to engage in science labs or hands on experiences to um, couple with that content that they learned the night before is just a win win situation. The second strategy that I would like to present is student portfolios. Um, and student portfolios are just a way for students to showcase their learning in a way that makes sense for them. Um, I love this because it allows students to be creative in the way that they show what they've mastered as far as the content is concerned. And each student's portfolio will look different. The other thing that I appreciate is appreciate is that it allows students to really put their best foot forward and know that the best work is what's going to end up in the portfolio. And so I find that students are more engaged in the process, more engaged in the creation of what it is that they're putting into that portfolio. The third strategy is student voice and choice. And we know that with personalized learning, there is never a one size fits all approach. It's a one size fits one. And what this means is that each student should have a choice in the way that they are learning, in the way that they're able to master the content. And this is gonna look different for each and every student and we have to be okay with that. The fourth classroom strategy is flexible classroom environments. And gone are the days where classrooms should be 
desks in straight rows with the flag at the front of the classroom, the teacher in the front of the classroom, the board. Now we have LED boards, but the chalkboard, dry erase board or LED board in the front of the classroom, everybody facing front. If we're going to really master, if we're going to give the opportunity for our students to master content, we have to make sure that the classroom is flexible to meet their needs. So there may be situations where a student needs to meet one on one with a teacher. There may be opportunities for small group instruction, may be whole class, but it needs to be set up in a way that the furniture is able to move. The environment is able to be flexible. It's colorful and really grabs the student's attention. The fifth classroom strategy is flexible path and pace. And we all know that we all learn at different paths and pace. And so this class is a great example of that. There are some people that are really excelling and they've jumped in and they've kind of mapped out their weeks and they're going to be finished in perfect timing. And then there's others of us that are, you know, life has happened and we need a little bit more time. And so I do think that is one of the beautiful things about mastery learning is that it allows students to have a flexible path and be able to determine their learning, um, their, the, the pace in which their learning will occur. And then the last strategy that I would like to share is student reflection and goal setting. This is important because it allows the students to connect the why of what they're learning with what they're learning. And so students are always asking, why do I have to learn this? Why do I have to know that? When they take the time to reflect on their learning, they are making that connection. The other piece of this is goal setting, and this is important because students need to set their own goals. They need to work with their teachers, their parents and guardians, and this makes it more meaningful for them. Um, and they become more attached to those goals because they are goals that they present, that they created themselves. So when we look at strengths and weaknesses, so for the flipped classroom, the strength is that students are going to spend time mastering the content at home when they would normally in a traditional setting, you know, be doing homework or that kind of thing. Um, they're going to spend that time watching the videos, engaging with the content and bring those questions back to their teacher the next day. A weakness is that if I get home and I'm totally lost as a student, I don't have the opportunity to ask my teacher a question in the moment and I could just be lost altogether and I wouldn't be able to have my question answered until the following day. In addition, teachers um, that are unfamiliar with different video creation tools, different content creation tools, they're going to have to master those to be able to create the content for their students. For student portfolios, the strength is that it allows students to spend time mastering the content in their natural environment. So they're able to create at home, they're able to create in that flexible classroom space versus taking a paper and pencil test and maybe not doing well. Um, it also encourages students to be creative in how they show their learning. And again, that will look different for each and every student. A weakness is that scoring the portfolios could be difficult um, than running a Scantron through, you know, a, a Scantron machine and getting an, a, a number score. Um, developing different criteria, rubrics, um, et cetera, is going to be uh, super beneficial for teachers in this instance. Um, for student voice and choice, a strength is that students are able to select the way that they show mastery of their learning. And one way to do this is choice boards. We've really taken up with choice boards here in Atlanta Public Schools. And this is just a great way, again, for students to take ownership of their learning as well. They're able to dive in and sh uh, pick how they're going to have their um, voices be heard and how they're going to show mastery. And a weakness is that um, student, I'm sorry, teachers will have to become familiar with grading different things. So everybody's not going to do a book report on this book. Everybody's not going to draw a picture of a water cycle. It's going to look different for each and every student and teachers have to be okay with that. For flexible classroom environments, the strength is that the environments allow students to learn in different spaces to meet their needs. And I talked about that need for maybe an individual one-on-one -on -one versus small group versus whole group. A weakness is the cost of furniture. Maybe it's going to cost a lot of money to kind of redo a classroom, to paint the walls, to make it colorful, to make it mobile so students are able to engage in that learning. For flexible path and pace, students um, take the time they need to be able to master the content in a way that makes sense to them. A weakness is that teachers will have to spend intentional time creating those pathways that matter for their students. And teachers also have to, again, be okay with assessing their students' work at different times. For example, the, those of you that are leading this course, some of you, some of our, my classmates have already done this assignment and you've already graded theirs and then mine will come along a week or so later. We have to be okay with that. 
And then lastly, for student reflection and goal setting, a strength is that students are setting their own goals, they're taking ownership of those goals and making the connection of how it impacts them in the real world. And a weakness is that each student's goals are going to look different. Um, teachers are gonna have to make adjustments and be able to set individual goals, and that's gonna take time. Um, teachers will also need to spend time teaching and modeling what uh, effective reflection looks like. Some students may not know how to reflect or what that really looks like. And so teachers will have to spend some time doing that. I've also included my references and I would love to connect and further the conversation on Twitter or X and you can follow me there at APS IT Natasha. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great day.